Climbers, maybe you've been listening to our song title challenge episodes, but you just haven't been doing it yourself yet. Maybe you're not sure if it'll work for you, but tell you what, it works for me. I just got a cut and release based on doing my own personal song title challenge. So listen up, we want you to win. Johnny, you know, go do that thing. Welcome to the climb. This is a show dedicated to helping Johnny fix his voice, which is a complete disaster after the last pack of this. But we won, so it's okay. No, this is a show dedicated to helping singers, songwriters, and indie artists like you create leverage in the music business because leverage is the name of the game. He who or she who owns the traffic rules the road. And that creates leverage that's going to get you everything that you want. That's why we called it The Climb, C-L-I-M-B, Creating Leverage in the Music Business. That's a Baxter name for my good friend and co-host, Mr. Brent Baxter, who is an award-winning hit songwriter with cuts by Alan Jackson, Randy Travis, Lady A, Joe Nichols, and more. Got a couple number ones in Southern Gospel last year, which is super fun. And today we're going to be talking about a brand new cut that he got and going on deep dive into that Mm -hmm. um what i love about bren is he helps songwriters like you turn pro by revealing how you write like a pro do business like a pro and then on the regular he will introduce you to the pros so that you can finalize the, the the last step in that which is creating the relationships with artists producers publishers etc and and getting your shot when you're ready to go, you can find Brent at songwritingpro.com. Once again, songwritingpro.com. And I would like to introduce you to my horse co-host, Johnny Dwinell. He's a big Packers fan Whoa. and he does like it. <laughs> Apparently, this we should never record after a Packers game again. All right. Johnny owns at Daredevil Production. They're breaking artists digitally by identifying new fans through data. If you're an artist looking to increase your streams, blow up your video views, sell more live show tickets, and get discovered by new fans, TV, and music industry pros, then Daredevil Production can help. Daredevil has worked with multi-platinum artists like Colin Ray, Tracy Lawrence, Ty Herndon, and Andy Griggs, just to name a few. You can find Johnny at DaredevilProduction.com. That is production singular, no S. There is no S because there is no other. Johnny D. My beloved Packers are three and one. Nice. So I'm excited about that. That is, um, that is, you know, that's making this all happen. It's all it was, happening. It's making your whole life happen. It's all happening. Yeah. After a rough uh, week one, they've, they've gotten back on track. So, yeah, I feel like they have. And, um, uh, you know, not for nothing, uh, Randall Cobb, who was a demand that, um, that Rogers had, to to come back to the pack is like okay well i'm you know they offered him all kinds of money he turned it down basically because i don't think anybody was listening to him and at that stage yeah. of the game a, a guy with that kind of a brain which he does have mm-hmm. is you want him in the think tank and he was like no no this is management you're a player beat it and yeah. he's like no you know and they're like what is it going to take to get you to shut up and come back and play and he's like give me randall cobb it wasn't the money <laughs> it was like i want i want some other receivers you know and so yeah. Everybody was saying Randall Cobb was washed up. Well, last night, two touchdowns. That's what washed up looks like, people. Don't let him (laughs) tell you you're washed up. BS. Right. So there you go. Hey, you know what? Which is, there's a lesson that it's a team sport. It's not all about the glory. He wasn't about the extra money and the bigger payday. He was like, get me people around me who can help me win. Exactly. Oh, what we can accomplish when we don't care who gets the credit, right? Yes, right. So there's a life lesson. Oh my gosh. So today I'm excited about today. We're going to talk about how something that, uh, that what we preach yes, when we practice it, our damn selves gets what results what? results. What? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's right. So for those of you that have, are familiar with our song title challenge, if you're not familiar with it, welcome to the climb. We're glad you're a new listener. You should go check out our hundred plus episodes of the song title challenge. Um, but yeah, I've been putting that into action myself, uh, imperfectly, but uh, you know, fairly consistently. And dude, it's paying off. It's paying off. I just got a cut release in Canada on MDM uh, recordings up there on an artist named Don Amaro. And so Love we're going to dive into that. And I just want to lay it out, not to toot my own horn, but there are lessons in this. Let's learn from some success. You want cuts? Well, look, 
this is what this happened. This is stuff we're laying out every week on the climb, twice a week on the climb. And if you apply this stuff, you're going to be better for it. So I'm excited about that. And I'm also glad to have to cut. I won't lie about that. You know, yeah, that's right. every that's cut awesome. is a, is, is a miracle and a thing of beauty. So <laughs> there you go. Well, let's take care of some business. We're super mm -hmm. stoked to be a part of American songwriter magazines, podcast network, ASPN. You can find that at American songwriter.com forward slash podcast. If uh, you've been a long time climber, and uh, kind of followed us over to this platform when we started a year and a half ago, then uh, by all means, go check out some of the other shows there. It's all, it's a, it's a bit of what you fancy, as they say, <laughs> across the sea. And uh, if you came to us through American Songwriter Magazine's podcast network, well, God bless you. Welcome to The Climb. We hope we're, right. we're adding value to you. Um, we want to encourage you to go to The Climb community on Facebook, which is simply Facebook dot com forward slash the climb community and this is a growing thriving group of singers songwriters indie musicians indie artists that are uh, connecting with co-writes that are you know supporting each other for um with with different promotion ideas and things that are working for them in the middle of this paradigm shift in the marketplace which is super important and also you know we give you certain spots to post your gigs to post your wins and things of that nature. And, and that way you put them in the right place and you get a lot of love. You get love thrown all over from me, from the, from the community, you put them in the wrong place and you get roadhouse. So there's a difference <laughs> roadhouse or love. It's up to you. What kind of love right. we got out there right now, Brent? All right. I'm bringing it up. So I've been terribly remiss about posting the new height segment in the climb community. So that's on me, but I have my, uh, I have my intern and friend Connor Shaw working on that. So uh, these might be a little old, uh, but we're going to have some fresh new ones. And so that's all on me. Let's see here. Uh, Brad Mays. This is from earlier in the month here uh, or last month, I guess, at this recording. But it says Brad Mays got a number one ranking from Reverb Nation in Tokyo, Japan. Kind of like being a top dog at a cat show, but I'll take it. Uh, so nice one. So Brad, uh, he's used the song drip that actually was another song titled challenge. He's that song has gotten some honorable mentions at the American songwriter, um, lyric contest. And so apparently he's getting some love in Tokyo. So congrats on that. Uh, let's see here. Bill O'Hanlon has finished 8,492 songs for the year. Uh, so congrats, Bill. And let's see here. Uh, James Kelso, he said, I get to open for a well-known Christian artist named Jason Gray on September 29th. It's a small venue of 250, so it would be a packed house. I'm really looking forward to it. So, And our buddy Patrick Adams heading up to the Yellowstone Songwriting Festival this weekend in Cody, Wyoming. Hope to learn and make some new connections and collaborate with some old friends. So right on, climbers. So I also want to point out uh, climber Patrick Dodge. He was in our... Um, he was in our music industry pitch event that I host with Ray Hamilton. And we had on seven time dove winner, five time Grammy nominee, uh, CCM Southern gospel artist, Gary Chapman is our guest. And we we're nice. getting songs from the community and playing for Gary, who's a hoot. And, uh, so I'm waiting to hear from this, but Gary, uh, flipped out over the song that, uh, Patrick wrote. And he, anyway, he was talking about like, and this was on at the time of this recording, it was last Wednesday night. He was like, man, Sunday, I'm going up to play this big revival thing up in New York. I think we may work this up and play it to see how it goes over. Like, oh, I love that. Yeah. He was like, he was really into the song. And uh, Patrick's like, you know, I happen to live in New York. He's like, come on up. Even if we don't get it figured out and worked up, like I want to howdy at you, you know? Oh, so I love that. I'm waiting to hear from Patrick on whether or not that happened. Uh, hopefully it happened, but even if it didn't, you know, Gary's working on a record and I think it has a strong, you know, I mean, if he's already talking about working it up and staging it yeah, for that weekend, yeah, that's a darn good sign. So, uh, yeah, Heck so congrats yeah, and good luck, Patrick. And, and I've already told him, I've emailed, like, keep me in the freaking loop. I want to know about this. So. <laughs> we make our own luck with this, you know, we go and we do the things we need to do. <clears throat> and then we get them in front of the people that need to know about it. And <laughs> then you do that enough times, you're going to get, you're going to get some love. You're going to get some, yeah. you're going to get some results. So, all right, guys. So, Hey, follow the podcast wherever you uh, 
consume your podcast. Sometimes it's a subscribe. Sometimes it's a follow. Just sort of depends. And make sure you tell a friend about it. That's the big thing, guys. Tell a friend about it. If, if you're spending this much time with us, I mean, these shows last 40 minutes to an hour. Um, that is a lot of time to ask mm. of you every single week when we do the main episode. We don't take that lightly, but we also know you're not doing it to scratch our backs. You're, right. you're, you're getting something out of it. So if you are, tell somebody else about it. Let them know this is the place you need to go because uh, I'll just tell you that, you know, as much as you like it, everybody else does too. Like the, statistically, we have, uh, we always have numbers going all the way back to the very first episode on every mm-hmm. single show, which means that when people get turned on to it, they go back and they binge and they go back and they, they start from the beginning and they want to listen to every episode to glean everything they can from it. So um, keep that up guys. And uh, let's, you know, let, let's spread the love. Let's help as many people as we can. Right. That's right. That's right. So let's talk about this. Um, let, let's I mean, I think you just need to start from the beginning. Right. Yes. Like, <laughs> like, and let's start from the beginning of of song title challenge. For those of you who maybe forgot or didn't know, we had a climber right into us that was like, "Hey, I want to hear you guys." Yes. Like, write like a song. on an iTunes review, which, by the way, iTunes that's review. Right. But anyway, he wrote us on an <laughs> iTunes review. Yeah, that's right. So, so, yeah. and he wants us to write a song like uh, on the podcast, which right. wouldn't translate it just it, it wouldn't work i mean it's right. not something that you can knock out um typically in an hour you know mm-hmm. and and it, the process of doing that would just suck i mean having to, to well you're to talking like, you're talking about you know one thing you don't want on radio which is basically what this is is dead air and if you've yeah. ever been in the co-writing room there's a lot of dead air there's a lot of dead air a lot but of we dead like air. the challenge of it right so right. then i i was i don't know who who came up with this it was probably you but um well what if we just did like a, a challenge where they send in the title and instead of writing the song <clears throat> we actually because I, I i honestly think brent that this song title challenge is so beneficial because i think that one reason that people write weak or lame or trite lyrics mm-hmm. is because they have, they have gone down the road of a weak, lame <laughs> or trite concept. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? <clears throat> and when you switch over to a better concept that e- even if the words are weak, if they're still on a second, con- on a better concept, it's going to come across better. It's going to oh, yeah. be a stronger song. And then of mm-hmm. course, as you're working, I, I, I would like to believe that that really killer concept is going to mother better lyrics, right? It's going yeah, to make you a better sure. lyric writer kind of a thing. So <clears throat> we um, we said, let's start doing something uh, where you guys send in song titles and then we will spend uh, 15 minutes-ish. Usually it mm-hmm. ends up being about 20 just trying to, you know, look at that title and figure out different ways, five or six different concepts to write the song. Yeah. Right. To, to like, we're not talking about lyrics, although sometimes like a lyric thing pops up in yeah. the process of that. But mm-hmm. the goal isn't to write the lyrics. The goal is to say, hey, you know, we've got this song. What would be the best way to write it? And, and, and th- this, this kind of, exercise this creative mental exercise to me is the difference between writing a lamb song called the dance about god knows what and then writing the dance (laughs) that's that's what i was thinking about was like you know the lyric on the dance looking back on the memory of the dance we shared neath the stars above for a moment all the world was right how could i have known that you'd ever say goodbye like super simple but yep. the over and especially what Garth did with the with the video to bring like the to really bring to the front like this is about life, not just a yeah. lost love. This is about how you live your life. Just elevated that whole thing. So the words are, you know, third grade level. Yeah. And that's not a knock on it. Just simple, simply stated. But when you say the right thing, Oof. you and don't you're, have to and say you, complicated. And you have that concept. I mean, this could mm-hmm. have been about a million other things that would have been lame, but they took it to this other place. And just, I mean, if you're 
a country music artist and you're familiar with the song that we're talking about, and we have a lot of people from a lot of different genres that mm-hmm. listen to this podcast, but on its surface, the dance is like, wah, wah, whatever. Yeah. But to people who know this song, it is one of the most epic songs of mm-hmm. all time. You know, yeah. um, it, it, it's that strong because conceptually they had this like really great place to go, you know? Yeah. And, um, and I doubt, I don't know, but I doubt that somebody didn't write that down in a hook book and say, this is exactly what this is going to be about. I think they thought about that a little bit Mm -hmm. and then said, what if we did it this way? And, Oh, and then the dance is born. And once again, with the lyrics, like you said, this isn't the most clever poetry on the face of the planet that makes you weep, but that song makes you weep. It's just perfect. It's so on point. So, yeah. So that brings us to, so we create song title challenge Yep, and we are, we're a hundred. Yeah. And, and honestly, we're, we've done a good bit more than that. Cause when we first did it, I think it was its own episode. We did like an hour. We had like three or four different titles thrown out. And then we started doing it as like in the middle of other episodes. You know, we started doing those for a little bit. Like we'd break in the middle of an episode, do a song title challenge and get back to the regular episode. And then we started doing them on every other Friday as their own episode. And then we yeah. had a little over a hundred of those. So, I mean, they're probably, I don't know, we're probably about maybe 120 in or something. I don't know, maybe more, maybe less. Yeah, but. and we've had we've had some people like really like grasp onto this, you know. Um, we did the request as one. Uh-huh, yeah. Which um, I may actually end up being able to produce a demo on which is really yeah. cool because um that's kind of fun um but there's another sort of title that's just on its surface it's like well, what's that mean yeah and, and then we sort of cooked up this other story of what it could mean which which totally inspired a couple climbers or, or a climber i think mm-hmm. to reach out to the to the yeah the song it was title. by craig kuchler and then tracy richardson heard it and she was like i love this she worked up uh some you know a rough i guess based on one of our uh one of our angles or something and she presented to him at least anyway he's like i want to write this with you and they they started working on it and then they called me up on it and i liked what they started well enough i was like yeah i'm in yeah i love that and and uh and so that and then it just turned out so good i mean the song is fantastic you know yeah well we um, had uh and one that i'm sure we'll dive into whenever it's officially out but i mean you know, you hooked me up to write with Matt Bailey, who we just did a video content challenge with on uh, Whiskey Away, which yes. is just that song gets in my head, too. But I was working with him and we straight up song title challenged, you know. And it ended up becoming some that they cut. So that will be that will be the third release. So we're talking about that. Um, so now we're gearing up for the second one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then that one will be the third one. And, and, and that one's like totally awesome too. Just special, you know, and involved a climber, right? Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's very cool. Well, yeah, and, we'll dive into that on a later date. We'll, we'll do the deep dive on that one, which is. Yeah, we'll do the deep dive on that one. And then I'm thinking too about, um, uh, uh, hacker and those guys like, yeah mm-hmm. with with the um with the other song where they where they were writing with you and yeah. they had song title challenge drink you on my mind right yeah was it? yeah <laughs> and where i was like i just don't know because they had brought in the title and I, was, I just don't know about this angle and and uh patrick adams was like you want a song title town ta- challenge it i'm like always <laughs> yes, and I do. yes i do and so you know we've we pitched it around and and one of the feedback i one piece of feedback I got from one of the A and R people I sent it to, you know, for some artists was like, boy, it didn't go where I thought it was going to go. Like I heard that title. I was like, I'm not sure. But then you went like to a cool different place with it. And I, I liked yeah. it. I liked it more than I expected to. I was like, and that is the point. There you go. That's, yeah. And now all of a sudden the ears are perked up. And at the very least we've gotten the attention of some A and R people, you know, of some mm-hmm. publishers that are just like, I like, okay, the, these people are clearly on their game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they're, they're, they're bringing it. So um, that's the kind of stuff that creates relationships, which leads to cuts, which gets you in the room and, and, and being inside the circle that you're trying to be in. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, as, as far as, it, you know, if you're going to be a songwriter trying to get cuts, if you're an artist, this is the kind of, this is the kind of stuff you want to be doing. So you're out blowing everybody's mind with your lyric when you're performing that, that's even a better visceral uh, result because mm-hmm. you're, you're going out and people are just like, Oh, like, you know, I love playing Janelle, that stuff that you send me, like Brent, when you cut a new song or get a new song written every yeah. play for Janelle, cause she's like, so into this kind of music and into the lyrics, you know? Yeah. And so she'll just be like, Oh, like, and just getting, just, I want to watch her react. You know what I mean? <laughs> to see, cause I know how I feel about it, but I've got, you know, I got a business mind, a music business mm-hmm. mind on it. And she's just a fan, you know, Yeah. that digs a good song, like a really good song that makes her feel something. So it's fascinating. But, cool. um, so let's talk about this. Like, I, so tell your story. Now. Yeah. Sorry. I wanted to set this up cause I thought this was really cool. Yeah. And, and so by the way, this is not the, this is not, the really honestly the first cut i've gotten from song title challenge from my personal one there's another one that will be hitting southern gospel as a single here soon very soon so we may talk about that as well but i think we should i think we should every single one of these is 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 like it's um, like proof like yeah we're gonna flick I'm going. I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to Monty Python right now. Every sperm is sacred. <laughs> Every sperm <laughs> is great. <coughs> wow, I don't know that one. But okay. And if a sperm is wasted, God gets quite irate. <laughs> I've not heard that, but it sounds like Monty Python. <laughs> All right. And on that note, um, <laughs> that's not the song. People. That's not the song. Although, boy, what a song title challenge that would be. All right, so this song, <laughs> don't. If you're listening, don't. Um, all right, this song is called One Tonight, and it just came out uh, by the artist Don Amaro. He's on MDM Recordings in Canada, so they're a good label up in Canada, and just came out on, I believe it was uh, Friday, September 24th of 2021. So it's on his EP called... Uh, What's that EP called? Like nothing is not important or something. Let me look it up here real quick. I forgot the name of the EP. Nothing is meaningless. So that's the name of the EP. Nothing is meaningless. And the song is called One Tonight. So first of all, let me thank Don for cutting it. I also want to thank Doug Falkins for writing it with us. And and I'll talk more about Doug here in, here in a bit. But so a little back up on this. So I have a hook book that I've been keeping since... 1994 because wow. it's it's a digital one start off on paper i eventually you know put it on a word document and that word document is bounced around various laptops and desktop computers i've had over the years and it, it is currently well i have it numbered it currently i don't know what number it is because it stopped counting it got so high so basically it, it says um Let's see. You're at, you need to put uh, that into an Excel spreadsheet. It won't stop counting. But I, I think we just did. We just learn the limitations of a Word doc on on the amount of numbers. Apparently, apparently we have. Uh, let me see what it is here. Let's see if I can find it here. Um, so I am currently. Well, where's it going? It's pulling it up. Okay. I, apparently, when you hit four thousand ninety four, it just says four thousand ninety four point one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently at 4,094.455. And then I still have a bunch in my daily uh, hook book that I put titles in every day that I haven't even transferred here and on my Evernote. So I'm probably up around um, close to 5,000, probably 4,700, something like that since 1994. Sure. Now, I only take a title off if I write it. So that's how the that's the only reason the list gets smaller. Other than that, I add to it. I don't do da- I don't do damage control. I don't do quality control on the way on the list. I put everything on there. If it strikes my fancy at all, even if I don't know what to do with it, I'll figure that out later. Mm-hmm. So I put everything on that list. And it's like ninety four, like Christmas break of ninety four, when I wrote my first song and started going, "Ooh, the songs are cool." When I write more of those, <laughs> I should write down titles as I get them. So really, like right around, I sang my last song, kind of. <laughs> there we with, go with Kid Gypsy. Then <laughs> uh, there was a passing of the torch. Yes. Um, so anyway, so a ton of titles, and you may not have that many. You may have more, but thing is, we get these titles, and they sit around, and we don't write them, and then they're pages and pages ago, and you know, they just kind of sit there, and we don't 
and we don't write them. And we tend to write from the bottom of the list. You know, the newest stuff that goes at the bottom. That is the freshest energy. That is. That is the freshest energy. It's the newest. It's the kind of the lowest hanging fruit. Usually there's a reason we haven't written the other ones yet. But when we were doing the song title challenge, oh, I think I smell. I think my wife is cooking sausages downstairs. That's going to be so distracting because I haven't had breakfast. Anyway, <laughs> so squirrel. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, um, you know, we started doing these song title challenges and people throwing out these titles that at first blush, we don't know what to do with. Right. You know, Johnny started giving his hot takes on them, but mm -hmm. uh, so many times we wouldn't know, like, what are we going to do with this? But then we dig into it. And then 10, 15 minutes later, like, oh my gosh, this is great. I want to write this. And yeah. so I'm, you know, I'm smart enough to realize, dang, I have like 4,000 plus titles sitting around. How many of these would be the same way? where I look at them when I'm going before a co-write or whatever, and I'm like, eh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But boy, if I put 10 to 15 minutes in on it, it would be great. Like, could be something you're kind of used to, to, you're kind of used to looking at it and going, eh. Well, it, and, and so you get into that familiar habit of, okay, mm -hmm. these first three pages suck. Yeah. But then you go pick one and you put, just put forth the effort of that 15 minutes. Yeah. It's like, I'm sure there's so much good stuff here. Yeah. But I just don't, I don't have a framework like the song title challenge. And I've said it before, you know, to you off air before, like, man, I got to start doing my own song title challenge. Like, I don't want to put them on the air. You know, I love having people send it in. So it's fresh and it's, you know, that's a fun exercise and involves our, our listeners. And <laughs> I don't want to put all my titles out there every week, you know, but like, hmm, what's a way for me to do this? And so I started setting my personal song title challenge, which I, I start, it's like, okay, part of the thing about song title challenge is fun is Johnny picks the title. I don't pick the title. He goes, here it is. Have fun. And we start, you <laughs> know, boy, here you go. Word boy. I know. Go do your word <laughs> thing. Word boy. <laughs> and so you just go with it. It's like, so at a 4,000, I, it's the tyranny of choice. I have, I can pick any of the 4,000. That's kind of pressure to pick the best one. So I need to cut down on my, I need to limit my options. That's part of it. Of what makes song title challenge work limited options in this case i have no options but on that one i was like okay what if i just do i have a slot of 20 songs titles that i can choose from so it's you know because i have over four thousand. okay so it would take me a long time to get through 20 by 20 all the way through let's say 20 so i have limited choice i can only pick out of this 20 so that's part of it and then the other thing is the time frame set a timer for 10 minutes and riff on it. Right. And so therefore it's low stakes and limited options. So it's low stakes because eh, it's 10 minutes. Yeah. Eh. You know, it's a, it's an, it's a daily exercise is how I set up to be like, okay, ideally daily early in the day, I'm going to take 10 minutes and I'm going to go through the 20. How do I pick the 20? Well, day one was titles one through 20 on my, you know, we already talked about how it's counted. In this right. word document, it's one through twenty. The next day is going to be twenty-one through forty, and the next day is going to be forty-one through sixty. Yeah, you know. So, okay, there By we the go. By the way, like, let me let me interject yeah. for a second. So, a little teaser about like my next episode coming up. Yeah, uh, a week from when this one drops is what this is all about right now. Is is this is what happens when you're married to the action mm -hmm. and not the result? Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, married, uh, you're, you're taking action and you're married to that and knowing that the action is going to produce results. But if you're married to the result, that oftentimes means no action, in which case, right. which is funny because you're married to the result. But when you're married to the result and you're like, oh, that's never going to work out because you've already pre-thought mm -hmm. out the results, it means you don't take action and there you guarantee no results. Well, which when is, you don't take action. When you're married to the results, that's when you you get swamped looking through your fourth list of four thousand titles, trying to find just the right one. Yeah. Off the top of your head, right? Like, oh, immediately that's the perfect one. I'm gonna yeah. go write this and spend the next four hours working on this or three hours or whatever, or take this into the co-write. With this, yeah. it's it's yeah, it's man, doing my reps, doing my my dailies, right? So I'm one through twenty. All right. Wow, that's from 1994. I'm sure there's nothing great here, but let's we're gonna go through. We're gonna find if nothing else, my cleanest dirty shirt, right, to put on right. the next ten minutes. <laughs> and if I get something great, that's awesome. If I get something that's not great, 
well, you know, it's still a win because I did my, I did my daily, you know, and, I, and you I, get, I, you're strengthening that muscle. I'm working and, that muscle and, and you're taking right. action. And tomorrow and when you take action day. once, it's easier to take action a second time on it. Exactly. And a third time. Cause now you're, now you're, now you're over it. And then all of a sudden oh, results happen. Yeah. And even on that first one, that oldest stuff, you know, over 20 years old or whatever, it's like, still there was like, Oh, okay. You know, you'd see enough of like, well, that's interesting. That's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that it go, okay, let's try this again tomorrow. And it's already win because you did the rep. Even if you quit after 10 minutes ago, eh, nothing was there, but there've been enough of those where I've almost never stopped right at 10 minutes because there's it seemed to all you're on a roll by that time that I found that I want to chase and pursue now, you know, so one through 20, you know, 20, 20 song title blocks each day. Now I've not co-written any of these up until I hit like the 261 to 280 block was the first one that I said, okay. And I may take some of these and still write them in a co-write, but that was the first one that I've, that I've since taken into a co-write and written, but there've been a bunch since then, you know, because the titles get a little bit better as, a, as I got a little, a little more savvy to the deal, uh-huh. but I'm yep. still, I'm still in the two thousands. Out of four thousand, so I'm still not even like halfway there yet. I um, mean, I, I, it, it used to terrify me. Um, I'm straight up. This is an this is an admission. It used to terrify me doing this when we'd get some titles that I just thought were lame, and I'm like, yeah, ah, man, like I don't want to put that. At one time, I I don't think I had a choice. You know, I just had <laughs> a lot of titles from climbers, and I thought in my mind these are all lame. Well, let's just pick one of the lame ones because that's why they call it a challenge. Yeah. So we go and we do that. And then, I, you know, all of a sudden it was like, oh, wow. And that's, I think that was maybe the day we came up with like the hot take on it, you know? Yeah. Like what to do, or maybe this is very specific or mm. so broad or, but it just doesn't look like you're winning before you're spinning kind of a thing, but let's work with it anyway. And to this day, I don't think we've had one where, at the end, I wasn't like impressed with us, you know, it's like, yeah. wow. And when I mean us, I don't mean like just, I, I'm sp- obviously I'm talking about Brent and I, but, but I, it just came from the exercise. Like, look yeah. at how much more we got out of this by sort of digging in a little bit. And just so, committing. Yeah. And not even like, I'm going to write this whole song. I'm just going to work on this for 10 minutes and brainstorm. Just yeah. that commitment, low stakes. Right. So, I, so I've started doing it. I've done it imperfectly. I haven't done it every day, uh, but I've done it. And it's like, why don't I do this every day? I've like gotten a couple cuts out of this already. Hello. So, and it's a great way to, to kind of build up your, your ideas for going into co-writes. I mean, most of the ideas it feels like I've been bringing into co-writes have been old titles that I've song titled challenged. Because those are the ones that are a little more fleshed out. And that, that's not always the case, but quite a pretty consistently lately. What mean what that means is they're they're good titles, but a title's not an idea. But now I have a good idea to go with it. It doesn't matter yeah. when I came up with the title. If I came up with the title in 1997, if now I have a good current idea to go with it. And so I've been bringing those into co-writes with professional writers. Hello. And you know, we're demoing stuff, we're pitching stuff, and now we're starting to get cuts off this stuff from the song Love title that. challenges. So whoever that was, I need to go look them up and send them a gift basket. Whoever that <laughs> was that, uh, that, uh, on the iTunes, you know, yeah. that, uh, uh iTunes should. review that said like, you know, Hey, write a song. So thank you. I've sent you some fruit, some grapefruit. Yeah. Anyway. So some future Christmas. swag. Some, we're gonna get to yeah, there we go it's seriously so all right um so this song one tonight that was in the uh 2420 to 2440 or 21 to 2441 range so it was probably around number 2430 that uh out of you know we've talked about like 4700 title mm-hmm. in chronological so like halfway back and so that was one of the 20 that came up that day and, and I was like, okay, one tonight. Okay. I think there's something I can do with that. You know, that yeah. wasn't like, oh, you could drag me to like, okay, there's, I can see that there's a lot of options on this. So I pulled that one out 
And that was January 27th of this year of 2021 when I got to that one. Okay. So pulled it out and just started riffing on it. And, and here's some choices I made too, because I think there are layers of hopefully things that you can take from this that are going to help you on your climb. All right. So knowing what I know now, I mean, there, there are many ways you go with it. You know, one tonight, I have one tonight. I'll have another one tonight. You know, it could be like a heartache. I had one, you know, I just came in here for one drink tonight and now I'm have, you know, one night stand or now I see her and now I'm, you know, I wasn't going to have a bad night, but it looks like I am having one tonight. You know, there's so many ways you could go with this, right? Oh, sure. So many negative da, 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 ways, but I thought, okay, knowing what I know now, what I've grown over the years as a writer and go as a commercial writer, going, what is something that I want to bring into like an artist, you know, what what would an artist want to sing out live? And I thought, okay, what about you just get one tonight? You know, you get a you get a thousand yesterdays, and there are a million tomorrows. You just get one tonight. You only have one, so make it count, right? That kind of idea is the thing. You just get one tonight, one chance to get it right. Like, you know, it's the present is leaving. You know, if it's even, it's leaving. Right. So, and so, okay. I like that thought because that's, you know, positive and kind of inspirational. It could be fun. It could be, I'm thinking like, how can we make this like a live anthem kind of thing, you know, just country and, and tempo. So that's what I started digging into. And so, uh, I did some, a, a rough, lyric on that it's like you know we got five days in the rear view about 10 gallons in the tank so i started saying you know you got one tonight so let's play off numbers five days in the rear view got 10 gallons in the tank two days full of nothing to do and a couple hundred in the bank you know that kind of thing it's like i know girl you're thinking it's just another weekend and there's a thousand more on the way uh but you're looking so pretty girl it just hit me we don't have any to waste because we just get one tonight so that's So that's what I started working up because obviously I went longer than the 10 minutes because I started finding a vein like I wanted. Let's ride this thing, you know, and so it's like when the timer goes off, you're like, shut up, timer. (laughs) I'm making money here. Snooze snooze button. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Snooze button on my awesomeness. Exactly. Shut up, timer. I'm 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 lucky when I'm getting here. So I just keep on going. And that's part of the fun of the song title challenge, too, is it's low stakes. If it doesn't work, I have my out. Yeah. But if it's working, shut up, timer. I'm yeah. going. And I didn't know it was going to be this good, you know? So <laughs> it's kind of like a, just a coffee date. Just a coffee date, you know? Then you spend yeah. the whole day together. That was a good coffee date, you know? But you also have that out. So anyway, so started working on that. Had like a whole draft lyric. And, and I really liked the concept of we just get one tonight. That felt like, you know, and it's a love thing. And it's a right now thing. And I'm like, you know, this could be a cool like show opener or something live. Cause you yeah. know, you think of that meta thing of come on, let's have a good time. Cause you just get one tonight here in Minneapolis, and here, Minnesota. And you're here and let's make it happen. Yeah, exactly. Cause you just get one tonight. Right. I'm so glad y'all came out to the show mm-hmm. tonight. You could thousand things you could have been doing, but y'all are here with me and I appreciate it. Because we'll never have the chance to be here again because we just get one tonight. Kick it off. You know, that kind of thing, right? And everyone was like, yeah, we just get one tonight. Let's all have a good time, right? It's that, it would still, it feels like it would sell live, you know? Yep. So I'm like, all right, I dig that. So I, so I worked that up and I got that in my pocket. Like, okay, this feels like an artist co-write. Maybe not an artist co-write, but I got to write with someone else. But dang, for sure, if I get to write this with an artist, I want, I want the chance. Enter Doug Falkins. Okay, so Doug is a guy that I've gotten to know through the Songwriting Pro community. He's had songs make, like, play for publisher before and some different stuff. So I've gotten to know Doug a little bit. He's a Canadian. And so he's written some with Aaron Goodman, who's, you know, Aaron and I write a good bit together, and he's a successful Canadian artist. Um, And so I would just see Doug's name on stuff, and his songs would be solid. They'd make, like, the top ten and play for publishers and different things. So through that so doug's taking swings right doug's getting at bats getting his music in front of me so i'm starting to become aware of him um right and and doug doug's a smart dude like he he runs a business but he also has a songwriting business you know and 
And so he started adding some value to me. He thought, you know, he's been on this, uh, oh, um, dang it. I got to remember the title of this uh, podcast, but there's an, another podcast. Like he introduced me to the, uh, to the host of it. He's like, Hey, and Aaron Goodman had done the same thing. Like, Hey, you should be on this podcast. I think you'd be great. And then Doug did as well, introduced us. And finally I was like, yeah, let's get on the podcast. And it was a good interview. So, you know, Doug's just, he's reaching out, he's adding value. You know, he's not being an ask hole. Um, Doug didn't have a big track record. Now he, he's gotten several cuts, independent stuff. He'll release some of his own stuff independently, but he's not like, you know, swinging the big lumber statistically as on paper yet, but he's doing good work anyway. So, um, I don't remember how it got brought up. Maybe Doug brought it up, but, um, here's Doug has a lot of connections with some artists in Canada. I have a single of the year to my credit in Canada, but I've not been doing a great job of mining that, that, you know, Canadian, uh, field there of, of artists and stuff. Like I have more cred there than I'm taking advantage of as a writer. I should be right. getting more rooms up there. Long story on why I hadn't been doing more of that, but it's like, it's time for that to change. Well, here comes Doug. Who's been bringing value. And he's like, so we basically worked out a deal. Doug, use me as bait. Let's get in the rooms. You know, a lot of these people, maybe you couldn't get in rooms with before. Use me as bait. Like Brent wrote that big number one smash for Gord Bamford. And he's writing with Aaron Goodman to blah, blah, blah. So I, I, I got some cred up there and he has some phone numbers and emails. Well, why don't your peanut butter get my chocolate? And we go make a Reese's <laughs> peanut butter cup. <laughs> all right. Go ride some sauce. Yeah. yeah. And so that's what, what's what he was doing. So he's like, Hey, I, you know, I got this guy, Don Amaro. He's on the MDM. You know, he's up for writing with us. Let's, you know, you up for it. And I didn't know who Don was, you know, cause I'm not deep in the Canadian market. Uh, but I checked that out. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. You know, he's, he's got a label, you know, deal. He's got a record deal. He's putting out songs, uh, liked what I heard. Yeah, let's do it. So we got together. I think this was maybe the first thing we wrote. And so I set it up. Hey, here's what I think is a fun, tempo could be a great show opener telling everybody we just get one tonight you know so set the mood we just get one tonight y'all have a great time because we just get mm -hmm. one tonight like i love it so we started working on it together and it did end up being a tempo thing and and we wrote it uh should look up when we wrote it, but just a couple months ago you know let's uh let me see here actually i can look up we wrote in april 26 so as the data creation I have on it. So it'd been sitting around for 10 years, maybe mm -hmm. in my hookbook. Then January, I finally song title challenge that sucker. Three months later, I'm writing it with an artist because Doug has been bringing value, right? He connected, mm -hmm. boom. You know, so we're leveraging what we got. He's leveraging his relationship with me <clears throat> and my track record in Canada. And he's leveraging some, and I'm leveraging some of his relationships. So everybody's winning here. Everybody's winning. Everybody's getting in rooms they didn't get in before, right? So um, anyway, so we write this thing with with Doug, and he's into it, or Don, and he's into it. And then later I find out that, you know, hey, sure enough, he started playing it out. And he started opening his shows with it. And it's going well. People are digging it. I'm like, that is my plan, <laughs> right? <laughs> Because you, it's also serving a purpose for his live show, which is exactly. cool. Something that he needed. It was a tool that he needed to open the show. And and I set it up that way. Like this could be a cool opener, a live show opener, go over live, but especially like as an opener, because you're coming in with tempo and you're coming in with, we just get one tonight, tonight. Let's make it count. Come on. What yeah. a great sentiment to start off a show. You're yep. just setting it up, telling people. It's very important that you have a great time tonight. Come on. Yeah, Don't sit yeah. on your hands. You only get one of these tonight. Let's go make it count. Let's have a great time. And so knowing that and, and trying to put myself in the mind of an artist, what's going to serve them? I'm in the service business. And that's why I started framing this idea as what's going to help an artist. It means have something killer for a live show, something killer to kick off a set, kick off a show. Okay, here's a sentiment that I think is something they'd want to say audience is going to want to hear. And it makes sense in the live context. And plus it's a love song as well. Ultimately it's a love song telling your girl, you know, so slide a little mm. closer and kiss me a million times. Cause we just get one tonight, you yeah. know? And so it ultimately it's a love thing, uh, but it works really well live. 
and they were just you know stacking up these these pluses and how this could serve Don and his in his artist career. So sure enough, he started playing it out, and they you know done well enough. The label likes it, all that stuff, and boom! Next thing I know, they're cutting it, and now it's out. It's like according to plan. Just the plan I had for that title when I wrote it down like 10 years ago. Right? so groovy now is it Simpson release downs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so it's been fun. And it's like, okay, starting to see, starting to see response from, you know, we'll see if it becomes a single or not. It's on his EP. Um, he, he just released the first single from that EP. A uh, cool song called My Poor Mama. And so it seems to be getting some traction. So hopefully to do well, his last single did pretty well. And so hopefully we'll you know, we'll help him on his climb and hopefully we'll get a single out of it. Uh, but it's out there. It's kind of like, well, did my job. We'll see if it's singles. That's kind of out of my hands. But what was in my hands was digging through my titles and trying to find stuff that could really serve an artist, uh, leveraging relationships to get in the room with an artist and bring him stuff that is going to serve him. And then, Hey, you know what? He gets what he wants, which is, you know, upgrading his live show because every artist is looking to upgrade their live show. I don't care if you're Kenny Chesney, you're looking to upgrade your live show. So that's sure. not a knock on him, but he gets what he wants upgraded and freshen up his live show, get stuff to put out that hopefully his fans are going to react to and hopefully make money off of and just grow his career. And you know what, if he gets that, what do I get out of it? I upgrade my career <laughs> you yeah. know, and my royalty statements. So I, I also yeah. like that too, because it's, um, in the context of promoting new music, <clears throat> mm -hmm. um, to be able to start off a show with a brand new song that's appropriate to be a show opener mm -hmm. from a brand new project. And, you know, you get to pump two of those out and then get into your hits that people like, you yeah. know what I mean? So they're they're pumped up and they're ready to rock. And mm -hmm. hey, by the way, you haven't heard those two before. It's because it, we just released them. Yeah. So check out the new EP. I mean, that's a great, what a great, what a brilliant way to promote a, uh, a new release with by, by having like a brand new show opener open the show. Yeah. And upgrading your live show. You know? Exactly. And then hopefully become a hit. And yeah. then it'll be the one they know starting off with a hit or his current single or something. So yeah. it's crossed on that. If you're listening, that's Don. A badass way to get it going too is just come out with a big hit right off the bat. Yeah, that's what tonight's going to be like. We started with that. <laughs> it's only going to get better. Exactly. <laughs> Strap in. Strap, buckle up. Buckle you know? up. That's exactly. <laughs> um, so, man, that all came from the song title challenge. Like, otherwise, that title would still be sitting back in the archives, getting dusty. Now, I'd have brought another idea, you know. But one thing I'm finding from this is that. I'm stockpiling ideas, you know? Yeah. So when I write, I have all these ideas that I can sort through to see what's most appropriate for that day, for that artist. You know, right. Cause I, I'm not going to bring him out of column B if I know that he's really sings from column C, mm -hmm. you know? Right. And just the more I'm doing the song title challenge, the more I, the more columns I have to choose from, <laughs> you know, the other one that came out was a Southern gospel thing, a title I've been sitting on for, years and didn't really know what to do with it until uh, I started figuring out what to do with it. Right. And it'll, it's supposed to be hitting radio anytime now. And, and we'll maybe do an episode on that as well, but I love it. Yeah. So I just want to encourage y'all to do your freaking song title challenge. Like if <laughs> nothing else, you're going to have more ideas to go into co-writes with, or when you do get a chance to sit down and go, okay, you know, I've had these little chunks of time. Like, you know, when I get up before my kids do, before I go to work or on my lunch break, I do my song title challenge because I have these little nuggets of time, these little golden nuggets of writing time. Now that I get to sit down and actually like I'm going to work for the next couple hours, get mm -hmm. you have all these, all this raw material to work from. Now, you know, you're going to have t not just titles, but ideas stacked up. that you are probably going to be ready to write. So when you do get that bulk time, you can take the best advantage of that and maximize that opportunity. So I think this is great. This is great for lunch breaks before your kids get up while you're doing your coffee in the morning. If you get some quiet to do that, I mean, you mm -hmm. can put this in all these different places, you know, 
And even if you're a full-time writer, th- what a great warm-up exercise. You yeah. go, okay, I'm going to be right, co-writing today, but I'm going to do a song title challenge first. I may write, I may bring that into the write today or I may not, but it's get, it's man, loosening things up. It's my creative caffeine for the morning. Get me going. Oh, I love it. I want to encourage climbers too. Like when you do this to, uh, man, like let us know uh, in the climb community, specifically if you got a great idea from a song title challenge that you did. Um, if you got a song written from a song title challenge that you did, mm-hmm. if you got a cut from a song title challenge that you did, um, you know, we want to, we want to hear about it because that just, this stuff works, you know, when yeah. it, it works. <laughs> It works. It is simple. Yeah. And <clears throat> hey, you want to go ahead and play the song? We'll drop this in here and then we'll close her up. There we go. Sound Let's good. do that. Play this song and take it from there, guys. All right. This is One Tonight by Don Amaro, written by myself, Don Amaro, and Doug Falkins. All right. We're back, dude. Killer. Thank you. So that's a show opener. I know it's closing our show, but hopefully it's just, it'll shake your tail feather. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> fun, positive tempo. So, yeah. um, that's it. So I just want to thank Don for, you know, getting in the room with me and Doug. I want to thank Doug for helping make that happen. And, and for the guys to write the song with me and for all the folks at, you know, MDM records to, for putting it out and hope it does well for them. So, so where can they find this if they want to add it to playlists, if they want to learn more about Don Amaro, the artist, like what, uh, what's his website? What's yeah. Let me pull up his website real quick. He's streaming everywhere. It's a M E R O, yeah. right? Don A M is in Mary E R O. And so man, it's on Amazon music. It's on Spotify. It's on all your streaming services, iTunes, all that good stuff. So it's out there. It's, 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 it's out there and it's loving it. <laughs> so there we go. And also like uh, you can find him on social medias. Let me pull up his, his Instagram real quick. Uh, cause I want to help promote him to see. It's just Don Amaro, D O N A M E R O. So you can find him on across social. all socials. There you go. So you can hook up with him there too. Yep. So there well, we killer, go guys. Well, that brings us to the end of another killer climb episode. This is where we practice what we preach and we get the results. It's bomb. It's bomb. This is fire right here. It's fire. <laughs> it's fire. So, um, uh, I mean, it, it just doesn't get any better than that. So make sure you hear uh, that we get to hear from you in the climb community. If you do this, um, Make sure you tell a friend about it and give us a good rating and review, guys. This podcast exists because we want you to win, so keep on climbing. And we'll see you at the top. 